Bohannon, he's a, a former Confederate soldier who, when he returns from the fighting the Civil War, it, he finds out that his wife and child were murdered by a, a, a Union outfit, and so it becomes his objective to track down all the members of that one Union outfit and and, uh, and murder them all. So the the show picks the beginning of the show picks up, and when he's sort of in the middle of that process. I play a, an English character um, from the 1860s who marries an American surveyor and moves with him to the Nebraska Plains to work on the building of the Transcontinental Railroad. I don't think he's a bad guy really. Um, no, he's, I suppose he is the villain of the piece, yeah, Durant, Dr. Durant. He's, um, but there's a, one, there's a wonderful speech in the pilot where he talks, he actually articulates very clearly about what he does and why he does it. And it's kind of the ends justify the means. And if you want this railroad built, then you need guys like me. And I think it's, it's a great speech, you know, and it does actually articulate all that quite well. It will be built. The only question which remains is, which one of you will join me in this mad, noble quest? Being a, being a Southerner, you start to realize that there are very few uh, films or television projects in which Southern characters are neither stereotyped nor glorified, uh, but treated as human beings and, and, and treated with uh, uh, a sensitivity to the difference in the culture. And this had that, you know, the Gatons for, spent enough time in the South growing up to, to understand that and to, and to appreciate the fact that they, they, they felt they needed a Southerner to, to play the role, and um, at least an American. Not, they didn't want to go Australian for this one, thank God. <laughs> uh, and uh, I happened to, to be in the right place at the, at the right time and, and somehow convince him to let me give it a shot. The script, the writing, um, I mean, there was, there was a sort of a buzz about this in, in Los Angeles, with the, the, this, the script, before it ever went into production. And, um, and I got to read it eventually, and I wasn't disappointed. It was as good as everyone had said. I mean, it was beautiful writing. Um, so that was, the, that was the first thing. And then, um, you know, so I usually read a script for the story and the, and, and the, the, the writing. And, then I look at it again from the point of view of the character, and, and this character is is uh, he's larger than life. He's um, it's a very it's a very rare type of character. You don't the the, and the writing the just the dialogue, his vocabulary, is so sort of like vast and rich. Um, it's just it's just a joy to play, you know. So there is a fair amount of research that you want to do. You, um, I was fairly well versed in, in the Civil War growing up in the South, but oh, not so much with Reconstruction. So I read uh, Nothing Like It in the World by Stephen Ambrose, which is a fantastic book. And included in it are uh, a number of, of pictures from the actual um, cr making of the Transcontinental Rail Railroad. And, and looking back now on, on our show, I feel confident that people who've read that book or have seen those pictures will, f will see that a lot of attention to detail has been placed in sets, costumes, uh, decoration, and um, I'm uh, I'm really, I'm really particularly proud of that that aspect of, of the show is the the attention to detail and the accuracy of of what we're doing. We're, you know, there there are very few court crews in the world that understand a specific genre like the Calgary crew understands the Western. And so we were lucky to, to get to shoot there and, and be uh, and learn from, from the Wranglers to, hell, the props guys, one of our props guys, he, he has got one of the biggest gun collections in, in North America, and antique guns at that. Actually, I knew a little bit about the period, because I'm a bit of a history buff, and I like to read history, and I, and I had kind of, in the past, read about the Civil War, and, and not so much the period immediately after. Um, but obviously, this is a real historical character. Doc Durant actually existed, and um, so you know, I read about obviously my research on him. Um, but un unlike you know, if you're playing a, a sort of an iconic historical character, you really have to kind of, in terms of your characterization, you you, you gotta 
take into account how they spoke, how they looked, all those kind of But with someone like Durant, who was not that well known historically, I mean, nobody's familiar with what he looked like and all that, we had a lot of liberty there. We could kind of create the character as opposed to just stick religiously to, to who he was and what he was. I researched the time period um, and uh, looked at the, um, obviously the English accent, I, I lived in London for a couple of years, so um, yeah, that was a part of it. And then, um, yeah, I watched documentaries and the building of it. Um, it was, you know, it was a very interesting time period. Um, you know, the, the building of the Transcontinental Railroad, it was the, the engineering marvel of the 19th century. and. Um, the, the, the characters represent broad range, so you've got lots of, you know, ex-Confederate soldiers and, um, yeah, lots of diverse range of characters from that time period, so, um, yeah, researched all that stuff. Well, it wasn't really an, a t um, time period that I knew much about, so it was definitely eye-opening, especially American history, I'm Irish, so, yeah, I didn't know much about it, so it was, yeah, yeah, but very interesting to learn about it. We shot a lot of it on Indian reservations, so um, built the set from scratch and uh, had the, the train and the railroad and um, the hell on wheels, which was this makeshift town that moved with the building of the railroad. Um, and we did all that out, outside, outdoors, in rain and mud and sunshine and whatnot. It was a lot of fun. It was a challenge, obviously, but, um, but it definitely added, I think, to the, the, the tone of the show, the quality, the, yeah, absolutely. I appreciated the the work that I was seeing on AMC, but it wasn't until I started working with AMC that I realized what it is. I th I think that they're they're doing right. Um, they really take their time deciding who they want to work with, and they once once they make that decision, they 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 tend to give you a lot of faith, a lot of trust, a lot of freedom. Um, they also they're very strict about about the delivery process. Uh, the The director of each episode gets their cut, and then it goes to producers. They get their cut. Then it goes to the studio. They get their cut, and then it goes to AMC. And then they get to give their notes. And they're they're very respectful of that process. Whereas a lot of times in in network, um, you've got a lot more fingers in the soup, and and fingers that don't necessarily understand the reasons for those lines and 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 the necessity of allowing someone to try and have a singular vision right so um, and, and also they, they you know they don't just take their time picking the people they want to work with they they try to have their entire season in the can at least two months before they start airing that gives us time to st stand back and realize and, and and decide do we do we have what we want do we need to go back and reshoot um, it's just smart whereas in, net, in network you eventually you're airing as you shoot and I don't I've never understood why large corporations want to put themselves in that position um, I'm not an executive they hire much smarter people than me to to do those jobs but it, it just seems the way that AMC is approaching this just seems to make sense AMC, I mean, they don't seem to be able to put a foot wrong. It's like, uh, I mean, every show is, is, is beautifully written, directed, you know, produced. And, um, and this was no exception. I mean, we, we, we um, you know, we came to this, it was a great script. We, you know, met the various producing elements in it, who, who also all get along really well, which is unusual. Um, everybody seems to like each other and kind of want to do good work. Um, and then uh, David Valankin, our, our um, uh, you know series director, um, did an amazing job on the pilot. A very tough um, schedule, you know, like a lot of a lot of elements involved, a lot of you know weather out in the prairies, all that sort of stuff. But he's a he's a big man, David, and he's 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 really kind of an endless energy and strength, and also a great eye, um, for, which is a very you know, great combination to find in a director and a terrific actors director. So, I mean, at every stage, it's been, it's been really, really good and positive. And, and you know, AMC are largely responsible for that. I think that there's uh, AMC have a reputation for just excellent quality. Um, the the writing on this show is absolutely superb. 
and that for me was a, a key point um, in my decision making for, to do this show. I just absolutely loved the, the pilot episode. It was um, you know, a real page turner to sound cliche, but it was just you know wonderful, and that's uh, that's really what inspired me to to do the show. What really struck me with, with this from the get-go was, first of all, the quality of the writing and the material and that, but also the fact that um, people work very well together, like, you know, AMC is our network and, like, Endemol is our studio, I guess, and E1 is our producers. They're, 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 like I said, they, they really like each other and they really get on, which is, believe it or not, unusual in this business. Um, and and, and, and that, that, that helps create a sort of a, a happy creative environment you know um, and that's very much been the case on the show it's 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 a rare it's, and for me anyway in my experience it's a rarity in terms of the the success of anything I, I not to not to to be glib I, I I just try to do the best work I can and then I keep my head down and if you know Ian you one invited me out here to, to talk about the show and to be honest there's there's nothing easier than, than talking about a piece of work you're proud of. There's mo nothing more difficult than talking about a piece of work you're not proud of, and I've been there. I think international audiences are going to love this. I mean, there's a, I think there's, there's an audience there for, you know, the Western, as it were. And while this isn't quite your, your, your typical classical Western, it very much is of that era and period. Um, and, and, and it's also a kind of um, an intriguing drama. I mean, from so many different angles, you have, like, personally, Durant, the financing of this project, you know, this huge undertaking to try and build a railroad across the continent. The financing of it alone was kind of like amazing, intriguing, and a lot of skullduggery and wheeler dealing went on there. And um, that's fascinating, you know, not to mention then the actual construction of it. And Helen Wheels, you know, refers to the tent city that moves along with us as we construct the railroad. It, it really is like a tent city. You've got your, you know, your your saloon, your undertaker, your poorhouse, your bathhouse, your church, your, you know, everything you would have in a town is there. But it's all in canvas and it moves with us. And you know, you also have all the characters who inhabit this place. So it's a very, very rich um, story from so many different angles. And I think you don't need to know anything about the American West or this period to relate to these people. You know, I think it's, it's great entertainment on its own. From an international perspective, I think it's really interesting in that there's, I mean, there's a great cast, and you know, largely American, but a couple of Irish and a couple of Aussies, and you know, I mean, we got we got quite an international cast as well. <coughs> and from the perspective of of, of um, the international audience, I mean, we we, we got. In, in, in uh, actually working on the railroad, you have Italians, you have Poles, you have Irish, you have, you have the, the, the freed slaves, you've got this amazing kind of multicultural juggernaut going across the continent, you know, and it's, it's, I think it's fascinating from that point of view as well. I think it's a show that's going to resonate with people from uh, all over. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, you know, defined as a Western, but I think it's so much more. It's, um, you know, it, it, it deals with a wide range of themes, diverse range of characters, and um, I think that the, the, the real gritty nature of, 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 of the, to the tone of the show is going to resonate with people from from all over the world. It's got a lot, it's a really diverse in terms of, um, you know, the, the, the people in it, the characters, yeah, it's, it's a universal appeal, I think.